Hi, this is John with Sysenge Quick. Today I'll show you how to use Kickstart files to automate Red Hat Linux installations. This process also works on CentOS and Fedora Linux. A Kickstart file is essentially a list of answers to the questions the Anaconda installer asks during a manual installation. You can use this file to partially or fully automate a Red Hat installation. When a manual installation is completed, it will generate a kickstart file in the root directory under the name anaconda-ks.cfg with all of the options you selected during the install. You can use this file to tailor future installations. There is a graphical application to help build kickstart files, though it does not have every option. So although it can be helpful in adding certain parts to your kickstart file, I wouldn't use it as the sole tool. To run this tool, you'll need xWindows and the system-config-kickstart package installed. You can launch it from the System Tools menu in the default GNOME environment. Most of the common options are available in the configurator, but it lacks root package selection and LVM configuration. You can generate updated hashes for encrypted root and grub passwords though there are other ways to get these. Let's take a look at the configuration file generated from my last CentOS installation. It comments things reasonably well, and you can look up the complete list of options in the Kickstart reference on the Red Hat website. I'll put a link in the video description, or you can search RHEL 7 Kickstart on Google. Here's the Kickstart file generated by my last installation. So let's tailor it to a new installation. First off, I don't remember what password I used for the root user, so let's generate a new one. I'm going to use Python for this, although you could use the configurator. So I'll use this Python script to generate a new password. It's going to be a terrible password, but that's okay, we can change it later. So we'll copy that into our kickstart file. We'll also need to adjust the partitions so they work in more general circumstances. The first thing I want to do is change this physical partition to be of size 1 and then have it grow to fill the rest of the disk. We can use the dash dash grow parameter to set that up. We'll also want to do that for the root partition. Finally, instead of hard coding the swap to be 4 gigs, Let's use the size recommended by the Anaconda installer. We can use the dash dash recommended option to set that up. And that's pretty much the only change I'm going to make to this right now. You can run through and see what other options there are. We're setting up the default authorization to be password database. Will be a graphical installation. We're going to use the NFS server to do the install from. We'll run the setup agent on the first boot. We'll use just the SDA disk. I'll set up my keyboard layout to be US and language to be English. We'll set the network card to be DHCP and a host name of CentOS 7-pixie.local domain. Root password's already been set up. We're going to use Crony D for the time. My time zone is Indianapolis and I and my hardware clock is in UTC. The bootloader just leave us the default. That's just going to install Grub for us. We're going to erase all the partitions and set up the default partition labels. We make the boot and the LVM partition and set up our volume groups. Our packages are just the minimal with crony and kexec tools. And then finally, there's some options about the password policy. Since we're doing a Pixie boot installation, we'll need to add something to our Pixie Linux configuration to let it know where the kickstart file is. I've duplicated the NFS configuration below and modified it to use kickstart. All we have to do is change the method to be inst.ks equals the location of the kickstart file. In my case, I'm using an NFS4 server on 172.16.1.1 with the path slash ks slash kickstart.cfg. 
I also made a couple mistakes in the kickstart file that I want to correct real quick before we start this. So the first thing I want to do is fix the NFS configuration. I had it a little bit messed up before and it wouldn't work with NFS 4. So if you're using NFS 4, you want to make sure the server is just the server, either the host name or the IP, the directory is the patch the installation media, and finally for NFS 4, you need to specify dash dash ops equals NFS version equals 4. Finally, I also added this reboot line to the end so that it'll reboot at the end of the installation rather than waiting for you to press the reboot button. That way we can fully automate the installation. So let's see how it works. I'll go ahead and start another virtual machine. It looks for DHCP from the TFTP server. Now we're running the first boot option from Pixie Boot. If you saw that red line that says CentOS Linux 7, you know that it's found the kickstart file and the installation media. Because if it hadn't, it wouldn't get to that far. It would crash before it got here. So we should be good to go. All we have to do now is wait for it to install. And you can see it's basically answered all the questions for us. It set our root password and it's starting the package installation process. Once it's done, it should reboot automatically and we'll be in our new CentOS installation. All right, there you go. You can see that it installed all of our stuff and put us right into our new install of CentOS 7. We've got our network configured, we've got our packages installed, my password worked for the root setup, and I'm all good to go. So that's all there is to it to using Kickstart files with CentOS or Red Hat Linux. Thanks for watching. See you next time.